to this week's vlog. And this week, we are working on some garden maintenance and just trying to keep up with the heat of the garden. Here I'm just cutting back some of the dahlias or harvesting the dahlias. And I seem to be able to harvest, it seems like once a week, and here my husband was working on power washing this back fence because I am planning on white washing it. Just a light white wash to match the vinyl fences next to us. And I decided to prop up this incredible hydrangea that has kind of flopped a little bit. This is its second year, so the internal network of stems, woodier stems, hasn't really developed. By next year, we should have stronger internal stems to hold them up. So every year, you do cut these back down every fall. Uh, I'd say about one, you cut down to about one third, and then each year, it blooms on new wood or new growth, so it's important not to cut it all the way back down to the ground because as the hydrangeas grow, it the leftover wood from the year prior or years prior helps to support the new stems. And I finally got to weeding this back garden bed I still have a lot of waiting to do, but I do what I can after work. And I'm glad, happy to report that this project is finally done. And the fabric that's down, the landscape fabric's down, we just finished up ripping up the sod, laid down this landscape fabric and we're gonna be getting some crushed gravel to finish this last half of the garden. You can grow corn or produce in a very small space or containers. What is contrary to popular belief, you don't need a lot of space to grow corn. Um, you just need to do hand pollination to help promote the pollination of fruit or your, your produce. I'm wondering if I should do a video all by itself on the process as to how I grew corn from seed to harvest. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I've been thinking about doing that. And here I just harvested an ear of corn. I believe these are 70 day, these are 70 day or 75 day seeds. So, I'm just peeling back the husk. I just noticed a little, those might be ear, earwig, little, little, uh, not seeds, but earwig babies. And what's great about corn, the husk, you can actually use those to do tamales too. So we're really utilizing the corn in a couple of different ways. So that first ear that I pulled back that just shows how well it was pollinated. And then this one, you'll see, so I'm just pricking it right now to see if I'm getting any milky substance out of it, which lets us know it's time to harvest. And I had to do it a few times because I wasn't quite sure but I did have a little bit of that milky liquid come out of it. If it's clear, it's not ready yet. But if you notice the spotty appearance to the kernels, there's some spacing, that just simply means that not every little silk strand was pollinated. So even though it's ready, 
de um, dependent upon if you put your fingernail in and see that substance come out. Um, the pollination wasn't as successful as you see here. So when in doubt, peel back a little bit and check with your fingernail, the back of your fingernail to see if there's a milky substance. And it's ready. All right, so it is after work on a Wednesday and I'm finally out in the garden after a couple of days of rain and I thought it might be a good idea to go through and pick some flowers to make an arrangement. So I've gone ahead and did my own little makeshift frog out of scotch tape to help keep the flowers in place. I don't have a formal frog just yet, but this is a great hack if you do not as well. But we have some sweet peas that are dying back, pops of dahlias, and there's a few more over there. And I just saw one of my first gladiolas popping up, which is right there. So just gonna have some fun and make an arrangement and try to ignore the weeds. So here we go. Thank you. 